Hey guys, how's it going? This is going to be the hardest part, actually, but it's not going to be so hard because you've got me <laughs> to help you. Um, but it was hard the first time I did it. So the breakout um, to, uh, series, the, it gets all, it's really kind of easy to build it. I guess the 2D arrays might be the hardest part, but now we're going to have to try to figure out how to make the ball collide with the block. And how is that going to interact? So um, let's go ahead and look at the um, block in detail. So first of all, we've got this block that's sitting in space and we've just built it to be yellow, but it doesn't really matter what color it is, but it's a rectangle. Okay, so think about the rectangles. So first thing is you've got a ball that's approaching this. You need to not just know if it hits a block. Like when we did Flappy Bird, or in the, we just need to know if there was a collision. Now we need to know which side of the block we collide with. Okay, because the way it's going to change the ball depends on which side it hits. For example, if it's hitting the bottom of the ball, it's just going to go down, but it's still going to be moving over to the same direction. What that actually means is that the velocity in the y direction is going to change, but the velocity x does not. And if it hits it on the sides, if the ball comes in from the side, it's going to bounce off, but the y coordinate, y velocity is going to stay the same, the x is going to change. Okay, so really there's four edges you've got to consider if you just kind of like think about a block. You've got the bottom and the top. You've got the left and the right. Okay, so we're going to do all of these edges, but we're just going to start with the bottom because that's the easiest one because that's the one that's going to start. Okay, so um, I did, I kind of put this slide in here just to be clear about the dimensions because it's easy to say top, bottom, left, and right, but you actually have to remember how we wrote the code of the block. The X and the Y of the block are the top left corner of the, so that's the where the rectangle is drawn. This, all the way down here, is going to be X plus the width and the height. So if you remember, the width and the height are going to be how far down and how far to the side we draw the blocks. And these are variables, but it doesn't really matter because we're going to use variables in our collision detection, okay? so. <clears throat> When you get to the point where you're actually trying to determine if there is a collision between this ball and the um, block, you're going to have to first consider the coordinates of the block. So that's going to be x and y. All right. You're going to have to think about the ball x and y. So because we're going to have two different objects and they're both x and y, it's going to get a little confusing because you can't say, well, if x is greater than x, but wait a second, which x? And you're not going to have to say block X and ball X, you're just going to have to choose one. Okay, so you're going to either make the ball check for the block or the block check for the ball. So in this scenario, what I'm doing is I'm thinking about as the block. The block is looking to see if it gets hit by a ball. Okay, so the block, when I just say X and Y, I'm talking about the blocks X and Y. I don't have to write block X, Y because I... My x is just my x. I don't have to actually think about, I don't have to say allen.x, right? So, but if I'm talking about a ball or something, other object, then I have to like specify the ball's x, you know? So, let's look at the coordinates that we're going to use. So, for the bottom edge, since we're going to start with the bottom, we'll have x, comma, y plus the h, okay? And we're going to compare that with the x and the y of the ball. And then we're going to have this side, the far edge, is x plus h comma y plus h. And that basically is going to define the ball, um, how close it is. Now the last thing we have to think about is also the width of the ball, right? We don't want this thing to, like, we have to think about the y coordinate too. So what we're going to do is we're going to have to also consider the <coughs> diameter of the ball. Okay, so that's the x, the y, the x of the ball, the y of the ball, and the diameter of the ball are the things that are going to help us determine it, which edge we've hit. So how are we going to do this in the game? So I just want you to think about this and try this on your own, but first decide what class to do it in. Okay, then do one edge at a time. So don't try to do all four and then write your code and say it doesn't work or the ball's getting stuck everywhere. Um, and then also, when you're writing your conditions, as you're writing it, check the conditions as you get there. And then, of course, you do that to make sure it's working. You don't want to write too much code before you realize that it's the way you've written it isn't going to work. Um, and then also, don't forget to change the status of the block. So we do not want these blocks to be constantly checking for the ball. Once their status is turned off after a collision, they disappear. 
we don't want them to be, they're actually still there, remember. So the, the, the block is a series of arrays and we're either gonna have them be displayed or not. Okay, so they're still there though. So we don't want them to constantly be moving the block. So let's go ahead and try that. Uh, I'll give you some time to do that. Pause, I'm paused right now. Okay, so here's how I did it. So I actually haven't done it yet. I'm gonna do it right now in live. Whoop, that's not that one. So I actually changed one thing before I go any further. I did um, change the paddle. So in the original um, episode or last episode and all of the previous ones, I had um, just drawn the, I just shifted the rectangle X and Y, but now that I made this, I realized it'd probably be better to fix X because we are controlling the paddle with the mouse and we're shifting it by the width of the paddle by two. Okay, so we we don't. I decided I'm just gonna shift the X by mouse X, and it's just basically the same thing, except now my X and my Y will be where I think they are. So when I do this part, so make that change. I think unless you already did it, I should have probably told you that at the beginning. Now that I think about it, I'm sorry about that, but it'll just basically make it a little bit simpler for the code. But it's the same. So let's go ahead and. Uh, for, I'm going to do it in the block class. I think I told you guys that, but I'm not sure. So um, public, I'm going to write public void, and I'm going to call it check um, ball. We're checking for a ball, and we're going to pass in the, the ball class. Well, that's the hard part for my students to figure that part out, is that you have to actually pass in the ball so that the ball variables are accessible to it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say first of all this is a little trick I'm just I'm only going to do this if its status is live so it basically remember when we make these um, let me go back to the top we have this boolean status um, starts off as true so we make the when we make a block we make its status true which means it's active if you want to think of it that way and we only display it if that status is true. Okay, well further, I only want to check the ball if its status is true. If its status is false, then I, I ignore all this and therefore I don't have to worry about that. So that condition is already settled, I didn't even do anything. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna start with the bottom, okay? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say if, okay, so how am I, what am I going to do? I'm gonna check the ball's x, so ball.x, we'll just say it's greater than x, okay? Let's just start with that. If ball dot x is greater than x, then we'll say v uh, ball dot v y times equals negative one. And what else do we want? We want the status of the block to change to false. Okay, so that's just one condition. So if the ball is ever greater than, then it should change the block. So let's just see what happens if I true that. Of course nothing happens because I've only written a method. I haven't called it. So how do I call this method? So this is in my block class. Check ball. So I gotta go back into my main game. So here's where I'm drawing my blocks. So I have this loop already written. So it's actually kind of easy. I just add a line of code. I just do block ij dot, uh, what do we call it? Check ball. And we're gonna pass in the ball. So the ball variable that we created that's in our game, we're gonna pass that into here so that all of its variables will be accessed by the block. And that way we can say, and by the way, this name right here, it doesn't matter if it's the same or not. So we'll just, we'll just leave it the same. So now you can see whenever the X, so here's the X, the ball, is greater than the X of the block, it's doing, it's, it's destroying them all. So that's not what we want, but it's working. So it's like, what meant to throw? That's stupid. No, it's actually smart. Kinda. I don't know. So now let's do. Um, let's say and the ball dot x has to be less than the x of the block plus its width. Okay. And we'll say and ball dot y um, is greater than y plus h. Um, let's see ball dot y is greater than y plus h. So if I go back to this picture here. So I don't just want to check ball dot y. So if I actually were to move this so that it was hitting the, 
thing. <laughs> You've seen my secrets now. So let's just get rid of that for now. But if, if I really want to think about the ball X and ball Y, a collision is going to occur not when the, the, so this is the Y I want, Y plus H, but I also want to factor in the, the diameter of the ball. So I'm going to say if it's within, so if ball dot Y is less than Y plus H plus the diameter of itself, that's kind of a hard thing to write, so I'm going to write that in. So if the ball dot Y is less than the, the, the Y plus H plus the diameter of the ball. That diameter over two. So the radius, sorry, not the diameter. So this is kind of a big condition here. So we'll just put it in parentheses. So the ball dot Y is less than Y plus H plus the diameter of the ball or radius of the ball. So D over two. Let's see if that works. Now it'll only <clears throat> collide once the ball gets close enough to the bottom. Well, that's actually pretty good. Okay, so we should also not have it destroying it once it gets above. So this would happen if if it was above the blocks, because later on when we get this game rolling, we're gonna have the ball above all the blocks. So we also have to add the condition of checking to make sure it's not above this line. So again, we're at the same point. We don't want it to if it's up here, we don't want it destroying. It's not hitting the bottom edge, right? We or let's say it's way up here. You know, it's not. It'll it, technically the ball dot y is now less than that line, but we don't want it to to destroy it. So we're going to say, um, we'll just say that the if the ball dot um, x, you know, is uh, less than. Yeah, that's what we'll do. So, so we'll say so if. Ball x, ball x, ball y, ball y. So and ball dot y is greater than just y plus h. This will just kind of keep it from destroying the ball at all the time, like anytime it's above. So it has to at least be to the line. So that's pretty solid. I mean, that's giving it a lot of value. So that'll take care of the bottom. So to do the top. If you basically failed on yours, you can go ahead and now try to finish it off from here. So you could pause it here instead and see if you can finish it off. But I'm going to do the top and the bottom first because they're basically the same. So I just going to copy this, copy pasta that. Okay, and the only difference, so that's this is all the same. It's going to change the velocity of the y. But instead of having the um, the height in here for the y coordinates. Just take that out. Oh, actually, that's not true, because um, now if we're talking about the top, we want to check that the ball. I should have linked these together. I wasn't really prepared as much as I thought I was. So I really want the ball y to be greater than the y minus the the height so of i mean the diameter so we'll say ball dot y let's just delete all this is greater than y minus ball dot diameter over 2 and ball dot y is less than y Ta -da. Okay, so actually that wasn't so bad. So that'll make sure I'm on the top. Okay, so let's go ahead and copy these suckers, both of these, because we've got two more edges to do. So I might as well just copy both of these at the same time. And we'll rewrite them for the left edge and the right edge. And we're going to change this to VX because it's going to just change its x velocity. And let's just rewrite all of this. So if ball dot x, so the left side is going to be when ball dot x is greater than x minus ball dot d over two. So that'll be the left side. 
Okay, but and we need the ball dot y to be greater than y, and we need the ball dot y to be less than y plus h. So, and oh, I forgot to do the other x condition. And ball dot x is less than x. Okay, so that's actually pretty good. That'll take care of all of the, so that's checking to make sure it's close enough to the wall, but not past the wall. That's checking to make sure that it's within the Y's. Okay, so that looks pretty good. I'm just, I'm, I'm going a little fast right now with this part because I don't want this tutorial to be like 20 minutes long. Because I don't really know the level of everyone who's watching because I got all sorts of levels of, in my own classroom, so. Alright, so if ball dot x is greater than x plus width, and then on this one we'll say the same thing, x plus width. Oh, except for I'm to the right of the ball, so it's um, if ball dot x is greater than x plus width plus ball. Nope, that's not what I want. It has to be greater than that's for sure, but less than there. So remember this little ball diameter, on the left side we wanna check it that it's close enough, but on here we wanna make sure that it's with the same thing. So it is a little bit different than I thought. It's not as simple as I thought. Okay, so now that looks pretty good. I think we might be done. I've done this before, so I mean that's how I wrote it the last time. So I think it's gonna work now. I do wanna change one thing before I check anymore because I can't really change, you see how I can't like change um, the dir the direction of the, the ball, it's always going, it's just changing VX. Let's go ahead and change that now so that we can check these collisions better. So um, in the ball class where we have it bouncing off the paddle, all we're doing is changing the velocity of the Y. But if you actually play the game, that's not how it's done. When it's off to the center, if it's like, you can actually aim the ball depending on where it hits the paddle. So basically, the if it hits the center of the paddle, it bounces straight back. But if it's off to the side, it goes back in that direction. And if it's off to the right side, it goes in the right direction. So that way you can kind of aim by hitting it off the corner. So the way you do that is pretty simple actually. You just do VX plus equals the difference between the, va the ball's X so this is in the check in the ball class, in the check paddle method, you go VX, and then instead of just changing VY, we're going to also alter VX, um, and we're going to say VX plus equals X minus mouse X. So let's think about that. The mouse X is the center of the paddle. So if the X is less than that, then it will be it'll give it a negative velocity. Um, and if it's to the right of it, it'll add it. But we don't want to add too much, so let's take that quantity and we're going to divide it by like 10 or so. You can play around with this by testing it. Let's just try that. So what this should do is when it hits the paddle off to the left, it should aim it to the left, you see? So that way I can really test my game. So I can get in there and really give it some velocity. Now I don't want it to go that fast. You see how it's going? It's a max. So let's actually give it a cap here. So all I have to do is um, just basically say if we'll just cap it. We don't want it to go too fast. So we'll say if vx is greater than 10 we'll just say vx equals 10 and then we'll say if Vx is less than negative 10, then Vx is equal to negative 10. So this way it can't just like go super, super, super fast. Okay? I think that's pretty much it. So now we've got that working. And now we can really test our game. So you can go ahead and play with yours and get it going. And uh, you can make it like maybe not 10, but it depends on how fast you want your ball to be able to bounce. So um, I just chose 10 as a random number. Probably since we capped it at 5, I should probably change it to 5, but now you can really see if your collisions are off. You see it's a little bit off there, so go ahead and play around with yours. 
get it working. In the next tutorial, I'm going to talk about changing the colors and also resetting the game. We're almost there, guys. All right. Talk to you later.